Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Johannesburg hosted the C40 Summit this week, where climate change was top of the agenda. Leander Culver tells us more. Hi, Leandy. Hi. Can you explain what cities can do in the fight against climate change? Yes, this was a big topic of discussion at the summit because the international community is looking more and more towards cities for leadership with regard to climate change. And there's a good reason for this because while policies get decided upon at a national or in even international level, it is on a city level that these policies have to be implemented and it's the city's people that get affected by the policies. And therefore, mayors also have an important role to play because they are closer to the people, so they know how their people feel about certain things. Therefore, a good example they gave at the conference is that mayors will also know that if you tell citizens that they need to implement a certain system simply because it's environmentally friendly or it will reduce emissions, you won't get that much support because people won't feel that it will have an impact on them day to day. However, if you tell them that you need to implement a transport solution that will get them to work faster and will allow them to spend less time in traffic, then they'll be on board almost immediately. And then reducing carbon emissions will be an added benefit to that. So therefore, it will be much more successful. And what is Johannesburg doing with regards to climate change? Johannesburg's executive mayor, um, Mr. Parks Tao, spoke at the conference and then he said that from 2008 to 2011, Johannesburg had reduced its electricity consumption by 20% per capita. And over the past two years, in real life terms, there was another 4% reduction. So basically, with this electricity consumption reduction, CO2 emissions are also reduced. And then the city is also implementing green transport solutions like the Ria Via Rapid Bus Transit System. And this system, at this stage, it saves about 380,000 tonnes of CO2 emissions a year. And once this system is fully implemented by 2015, about 6 million tonnes of CO2 emissions a year will be saved. And how can cities collaborate with national government to ensure that they develop an effective universal climate change agreement. At the conference they said that cities' participation was important in ensuring that the universal climate change agreement that will be finalized hopefully at COP21 in Paris in 2015 is effective. Um, three main ways were suggested in which cities can collaborate with national governments. The first was for cities to use the metrics of the global climate change system. What this means is that when they, for example, implement a transport system, they should set targets for CO2 emission reduction. And then they should also benchmark themselves against those targets and report on how far they've come. So this will allow the international community to understand what they are doing and what real impact it is making. Then secondly, cities can also look to green their current budgets, saying meaning that instead of just looking at cost, they should also look at value from lower emissions and high res resilience. And thirdly, cities could open their doors to private sector and commercial investment. Is the C40 network growing in Africa? Yes, it definitely is. At this conference, the C40 chair, Eduardo Paez, announced that three new African cities had joined C40. Um, these cities are Cape Town, Dar es Salaam and Nairobi. So with these three cities added, the amount of C40 cities in Africa currently stands at seven, with the total C40 network consisting of 66 cities. Thanks, Leandy. That is the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.